My next guest has $20 billion in assets under management in investment funds focused on Vietnam, private equity, and real estate. With me now is chairman and founder of KYG International, Catherine Yip. And Catherine doesn't do a lot of interviews, but she has graciously uh, come to our Hong Kong studios today so we could pick your brain on just where you're putting all your dollars, which in the region excites you the most. I think for me it's actually the China plus one strategy and my plus one I happen to have selected Vietnam mm. and the Mekong Delta region just because I think Vietnam as a country is very interesting with 90 million people its population 60% of the age of under 30 and they are very skilled workers great work ethics and a burgeoning class of middle class, uh, middle class because unlike other countries in the ASEAN region, they receive $113 per capita of foreign repatriation funds per year mm. versus China at 48 and India at 54. So with that sort of amount of opportunities and they're the number one rice exporter in yep. the world, coffee exporter and market leaders in the shrimp cashew nut and black pepper business, which I think is amazing. So what businesses are you in then? Well, I think our fund basically looks at various opportunities. Yeah. There's a lot of state-owned enterprises right. looking to privatize. Yeah. Uh, I think there's also a lot of opportunities in real estate because of its middle class and a huge amount of consumer buying power because of all the cash and liquidity that they have in abundance, basically. So it's about the supply chain, but it's also about those finished products getting into the hands of consumers. Absolutely. So it's the retail companies. Absolutely. And also manufacturing is very good as well. Yeah. You know, about one third of Samsung products would be made out of Vietnam in the future. Yeah, that's incredible. Yeah. So China plus one, because China, yes. if it's on its own, it's kind of disappointing. Well, I think, it, you know, it's been a very volatile market, yeah. and China is the world's second biggest economy. You know, we can't afford to ignore it, but I think it's going through some growing pains at the moment in terms of reforms, but yet I think in the law haul, you know, China will be fine. So I think with all good things, you have to also look at other opportunities in the region as well. All right. In the private equity space, you've yeah. got a lot of investors. They want to put their dollars to work literally by placing it directly into the hands of people who are going to grow their dollars. Um, so in terms of where you, which sectors you like, what, what are your plays? I think for me, I think that overall, I think the tech sector is good. I know there are a lot of people who yeah. think the tech sector is not, but you know, Asia is a young population. Yeah. We have double the amount of, you know, handheld devices per year over US and Europe, and that's just not going to stop. And I think as we go into the tech sector more and more, our lives are so integrated and we're vertical. We manufacture here, we develop here, and we use it here. So. And do you think that as the demographics shift into a more wealthier, middle class income, more educated, that the buying power, the purchasing decision that these consumers make are going to be a little bit more sophisticated? like developed markets. Absolutely. And I think brands have to adjust their core competencies. Yeah. I think, you know, with anything, you know, when you come out to Asia, you can see the different taste levels. You know, people are actually more sophisticated than for. They're not just looking for brand, they're looking for quality as well. And I think there are a lot of sleeping beauties in Europe. Brands that per perhaps aren't as obvious with big logos are going to find themselves being demanded in the near future. Even from Asia? Even from Asia. Really? Yes. So why do you suppose that is? I think the taste, you know, as, as you know, China and basically the Asian popular travel, their tastes are becoming far more sophisticated. Yeah. You know, look at the wines that they're drinking. You know, blind tasting, they're not buying the most, you know, expensive wine. They're buying the wine that actually has the best taste. And I think in terms of food, clothing, you know, housing, furnishings, it's just across the board. There's a rising income, rising demand, rising awareness. Yeah. Well, if there is one thing that keeps you up at night, which region is it and why? I think, you know, we are global citizens. I think ultimately, personally, I look at world peace. I know it sounds corny, but I think this... It's important. Stability is important. It is. And it also affects the market, you know, how people's sentiments are and how they look at short-term, long-term investments. So I think that's perhaps, you know, the uh, economic issue is one thing, but ultimately political stability is very important to me. Well, Catherine, you have chairman and founder of KYG International. I know it was your TV debut, but uh, <laughs> thank you for making it here at Bloom. Bloomberg. Well, yes. your pleasure. Thank you very much. <laughs>